Good morning, John Stead from HMH Advisory. Again, we present a brief overview of the federal budget as it relates to the SME sector, individual taxpayers and investors. The budget this year has a strong focus on infrastructure and welfare matters, and there's not much at all relating to business, individuals and investors. Looking firstly at business measures, just one thing to note, which is that there is an extension for another 12 months to 30 June 2018 for the immediate write-off of assets worth up to $20,000 for businesses with a turnover up to $10 million. That's good news. For individuals, there are no changes to individual tax rates. The temporary 2% budget repair levy will finish on the 30th of June this year as planned and there will be an increase in the Medicare levy from 2 to 2.5% 2 from 1 July 19. There will be a great new opportunity for downsizers to bolster their super. From 1 July 2018, downsizers will be able to contribute up to $300,000, $600,000 for a couple, into their super after selling a house they've owned for at least 10 years. This particular contribution will be exempt and therefore on top of most of the existing restrictions on non-concessional contributions. There may be some devil in the detail and time will tell, but on the surface this looks like a nice opportunity to boost super savings in the protected super environment. Next item is in relation to property investors. There's been a lot of talk about trimming back the benefits of investing in rental properties because of the housing affordability issue. It's been suggested a possible aboli abolition of negative gearing or the pruning back of CGT concessions. Both of these things have been widely discussed. In the end, there's some minor tinkering. Uh, two items, firstly denying depreciation on plant and equipment purchased from a previous owner. Such costs just to be considered as part of the CGT cost base of an asset upon sale. Expenditure which is incurred by the current owner of the property will continue to be deductible, but things inherited from a previous owner won't be. And the other minor tweak is a denial of travel claims for inspecting or maintaining properties. So very little there to be concerned about for property investors. Next minor item, particularly relevant to uh, those of us with kids who are trying to get into the property market, there's an opportunity for first home buyers to salary sacrifice money into super, park it there for a while and get some benefits from concessional tax treatment. This will allow a slight acceleration in the savings ability for first home buyers who can invest up to $15,000 a year and $30,000 in total. So a young couple could invest up to $60,000 in this way, enjoy some concessional tax benefits and then withdraw the money from their super at the time of their house purchase. Finally, for our investor clients, in regard to housing affordability, again, there's been a lot of talk about this there are some new tax incentives for managed investment trusts who are investing into affordable housing based on a number of prescribed requirements. No doubt fund managers will be looking at these requirements to develop the relevant vehicles for potentially tax incentivised funds for our investor clients. Our financial advisors will be keeping an eye on this opportunity uh, to see what emerges for our investor clients. So that's pretty much it folks. We haven't taken up a lot of your time this year. Uh, there's not a lot in the budget this year for business owners, super contributors or investors. A lot of it, particularly the super stuff was done last year. So for most of us this time round, it's largely business as usual. Thanks for listening. As usual, if you have any queries on any aspect of the budget, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Cheers for now.